We're going to be joined by our co-host here, which are Wesley Perkins, Benjamin Bornstein, and the lovely Chelsea Torres, who's joining us all the way from Corpus Christi, Texas. And our special guest on today's show is the one, the only, the rated R superstar himself, <laughs> Rudy Campos Jr. Rudy, how are you doing, man? You know, I'm good, Joe. The uh, the prodigal son comes back to two shots. It's been a long time since I've been back. So since then, I've kind of uh, I've kind of grown a little bit from the radar sports star to I've heard ravishing Rudy Campos. I've heard the sports break kid, the sports messiah. I don't know anymore. Just call me Rudy. It's easy. Ravishing I can't even Rudy. That's my real first name anyway. So I call kinda, me Rudy. I kind of <laughs> like Ravishing Rudy, by the way. I thought me that too. was. Me too. That one's my favorite. That's, that's, the, that's the popular one. I don't, I'm don't. i working on the body for it. I don't have the body quite yet for it, but I'm working hard on it. You and me both, brother. It's a process. <laughs> it's a work in progress, man. But we're both doing good. So congratulations to you on your weight loss, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All I did was shave. That was all I did. Yeah. And and shout out to uh to Carolina Teague's beans. You sent me a picture of some enchiladas. She made enchiladas look bomb, but the beans needed some help. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, definitely. I don't know if you should give it a shout out. I think it's a rest in peace to those yeah, beans. To the beans, <laughs> rip the beans. Yeah, exactly. They were pretty bad. Rip beans. <laughs> they looked like they're out of the can. <laughs> Got nothing but love for you, Carolina. <laughs> but moving on here, we're gonna go ahead and talk about some Lamarcus Aldridge news. The latest trade new rumors that are going out there. Um, I just went ahead and saw something that just popped up uh, not too long ago. And it was through uh, Jabari Young, actually. Jabari Young had put this uh, tweet out there by Kurt Hel Helen uh, from NBA Basketball Talk. And it was a report stating that, you know, the reports are stating more than likely Marcus Aldridge is going to get bought out by the San Antonio Spurs. But we keep hearing a lot of things. My 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 scenario is I really think that that will happen, that he will, in fact, wind up getting bought out. There's a lot of rumors out there. Every day we hear something new. Another team has entered the fray. So-and-so is he's interested. You know, the Spurs are taking offers. They're listening. I'm sure they're listening to tons of people, tons of teams out there on offers for LaMarcus Aldridge. But do they really make sense at the end of the day? Probably not. We're probably just going to get, what, some scrubs? For LaMarcus at this point, he's 35 years old. He's a aging former NBA All-Star. And let's face it, his better years are behind him. You know, at this point, he does still have value. However, that value is going to probably be coming at a lesser role that he's going to have to play. I don't know how likely he is going to be to want to do that. I know he didn't want to do that here with the San Antonio Spurs. To me, it's going to be a buyout. And you know, the weird thing is the Spurs for an office as of yet of late have not done a really good job, should I say. Who did they have to buy out? Paul Gasol. The next one that comes to mind, Damari Carroll. And now we're having one, LaMarcus Aldridge. Does not bode well, Ben. Tell me, what's going on with this front office and their decision making? You know, it's some people are not going to be happy with the buyout. But I think in the end, you kind of have to do LaMarcus Aldridge a favor here. You got to do him a solid because... When he chose San Antonio in that offseason where he was a free agent, he made San Antonio look like a legitimate free agent landing spot. And so I think for, – and for the Spurs, really, at this point, like you said, they're not going to get much in return for him. And if you're not going to get much in return, just buy him out. It it doesn't hurt you. His, his contract's coming off the books this summer anyway. Buying him out doesn't change that. It doesn't make it worse. You're not stretching it over a, the course of two or three years. You know, if, if nobody hits you up by the March 25 deadline, just cut loose. Just buy them out, be done with it, and you've freed up a roster spot. Yeah. Then, you know, like I said, you know, that's probably going to be the, the likely scenario, buyout. Um, but let's go ahead and get your opinion. We'll go ahead and go with you, Chelsea. What do you think? Um, I kind of agree because I just feel like trades right now, I know there's a lot of talk with uh, Gordon Hayward from the Celtics, uh, Leonard from Miami, and I just don't know – what is it like a $24 million difference for Aldridge? I just don't know if, like you said, if it's worth it. Otherwise, what, what are the Spurs going to end up getting in if they do try to go for a trade? Some low end guys that aren't really needed right now. Um, it does make the most sense right now just to buy out Aldridge, in my opinion. Yep, I, I agree. And we'll go ahead and get Wesley's take. Wesley, what do you think? 
Worst case scenario for LaMarcus Aldridge, is it going to be the Spurs are just going to buy him out or will a trade be made? You know, I've been on the fence about this for a little bit. I, I, you know, you, you read things off of, you know, the national media and they're never right. I mean, Sam Amick was reporting that they, the Spurs will definitely move him, you know, prior to, you know, any type of buyout. But I, I tend to agree with everybody it, at this point, unless you knew that you were going to get a piece back, that's going to help this squad right now. Uh, and isn't going to do you any cap damage, you know, I then, okay, you take that, you take that chance if it's somebody that's going to help, but you know, nobody's out there. His, his uh, market, he's been, people act like, oh my gosh, he's available for, he's been available for a while and um, there hasn't been any real big bites. I think the contenders at this point are waiting for him to be bought out. And then you're going to see, you know, the LAs of the world and the, you know, even the the Celtics and those that actually need a big right now that will, probably take a chance on him you know so I, I i tend to agree with it um, i think at this point the front office knows what they're doing i mean you know they've got a lot of money for free agency this summer and let's be honest if the spurs miss the playoffs i don't want that but if they do there's a great lottery with a lot of great bigs yeah there you go you're not lying there the nba draft lottery coming up would actually be a good thing for the san antonio spurs so they don't necessarily like ben says have to tank they just keep doing what they're doing so let's go ahead and get rudy uh, take on this. What do you think, Rudy? Lamarcus you know, Aldridge gets traded, or they're going to buy him out? I've never bought the whole trade scenario thing for Lamarcus Aldridge. It's always been a buyout for me. The biggest reason why is because you know, first off, let's be honest. Everybody on Spurs Twitter, Spurs fans around the world, were happier than a fat kid at a buffet. I mean, they were extremely happy to know that LMA and the Spurs are parting ways. But no team is going to trade for Lamarcus Aldridge. I mean. All your contenders are going to have to give up $24 million roughly to get him. And that means they're going to have to give up someone in their core. They're not going to disrupt their core, you know, especially if they're in contention. There's top two seeds in the East and West, wherever they're going to be. You're not going to give up players to get a LaMarcus Aldridge. You're going to wait for the buyout. It's going to be real cheap to sign him. The only way you're going to see a trade happen is if a team desperately wants him. And they've got to be desperate. If not, they're going to be, it's going to be a bidding war once he gets bought out. I've never once bought about the trade rumors. I knew they were going to buy him out. I still feel they're going to buy him out. There's just, I mean, there's no reason for a team to disrupt anything. I mean, you look at the Lakers who want him. What are you going to do? You got to give up maybe a Kuzma or something like that because of the money. You can't do that. You don't want to do that. So unless he's going to, you know, I don't know, Toronto or somewhere else, because we we're notorious for shipping guys to Toronto apparently. So unless you're going somewhere out there or anything like that, he's going to be bought out. He's going to go on his own free will wherever he wants. And yes, the lottery year coming up, if the Spurs don't make the playoffs, who cares? Big deal. Plenty of names in this lottery coming up. Maybe we'll get the number one pick. Maybe we'll get Cade Cunningham, even though we don't need him. Maybe we'll get him. We'll see what happens. But as far as LMA goes, buy him out, pack his bags, we, you know, laters. Who cares? Yeah, he's owed $24 million. They're 20, 24.5, <laughs> somewhere around that neighborhood. $24 million on his contract. If the Spurs were to buy him out, they're going to pay about $8.5 million to buy him out of his contract and send him on his way, and they part ways as friends. I, at this really? point, are they friends? Well, they're, they're doing <laughs> what he wants. He wants to go ahead and be moved because he's not happy with his role. He hasn't they're been happy enemies. with his role for a while, you know? Does, let's be honest. He hasn't been he happy, hasn't been with, happy with his role since he got to San Antonio. Yeah. I mean, Agreed. Let's be Agreed. honest. Just never really looked, hasn't. He just never looked like he fit well with this team, you know? And when he asked for the trade, the writing was already on the wall at that point. I think they should have just got what they could for him and move on. You know, the the deuce did his dirty. I'm not gonna lie about that. He <laughs> he messed us up for, oh, <laughs> for quite some for quite some time, which we're gonna <laughs> actually use that as a segue into the next segment here. We're actually gonna wind up talking about the hypothetical. What would happen if, in fact, Kawhi Leonard? You, we've heard the reports. He's not happy over with the Clippers. You know, he's he doesn't like it there. What if, a hypothetical, he decides to come back to San Antonio? Would Spurs fans welcome him back with open arms? I talked about this early this morning on the Ticket 76, 760 AM with Chris Duell, and they took a poll. The fans voted by a slim margin that they would welcome Kawhi back with open arms. I put that same question, I presented it to Spurs Twitter, and I looked at all the responses. It was pretty much split right down the middle. 
You have the faction of fans who absolutely don't want him back. They're still butthurt like Chelsea. They never want to see him sniff an, another <laughs> basketball here in San Antonio. Don't want to see him in a Spurs jersey. And then you have the other friends that are kind of like me. Time heals all wounds. Welcome him back. He instantly makes the team better. He makes him a championship contender and could possibly get us another championship. I'm not going to say no to a top five player, you know, that plays both ends of the ball really well, regardless of his diva behavior. I won't say no, but that's just me. I want to go ahead and get a, a Rudy's opinion on this one because he had a good hypo hypothetical. And not only that, but he had a good take on this. So, Rudy, let us have it. No. Yeah, basically, I said it's like the old, it's a next girlfriend where, you know, it was the best relationship you've ever had. She found someone else. She went away. You're heartbroken. You're pissed off. You're throwing everything against the wall, ripping up the pictures, burning the jerseys, if like if she wore a jersey, but burning the jerseys. And then all of a sudden she comes back. You're going to take her back. It's like what I said, hashtag soulmate problems. You're going to take her back. It's it's a fact you take her back. Have I been through that? Hell yes, I've been through that. Everyone's been through that. That one person, and you got to take them back. Does it work out a second time? Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. More times often it doesn't. But yeah, you take Kawhi Leonard back. I called him the fake number two for years. I was pissed off at him. I didn't throw a Lego you know, model of him in the floor. <laughs> and the trash. That. Um, but as far as it goes, you to me, you got to take him back. I mean, he's a top what top three top four top five player i mean plays both ends of the ball the only thing i look at is will the city of san antonio welcome him back hell yeah all you got to do is just say hey we're we're gonna have fiesta next week for two weeks oh by the way we're gonna take Kawhi leonard back he's coming back home but hey it's fiesta go to niosa go to this take your mind off of san antonio We'll get Kawhi back. If he comes back, no big deal. I know uh, Chris Do I think, was mad this morning because he doesn't want Kawhi back. But deep down inside, in Chris Duell's testicles, he definitely wants Kawhi Leonard back in San Antonio. Everybody well, actually, does. I asked Chris, I said, do you still have your Kawhi jersey? And Chris says, well, you know what I did to the jersey. I said, yes, but do you still have it? Well, yeah, I still have it. You know, it's duct tape and all that. I said, you never threw it away because you just, with that one little sliver of hope that maybe... He'll come back, and if you know, me there's a chance. Yes, yeah. exactly. He'll just take the duct tape off. No, they're they're at night in their bed sleeping with the Kawhi bobblehead that was free at the Spurs <laughs> game. Those people are. You do not say no to a top five talent, period, at all. So, what we're doing is we're going to get rid of one Lamarcus, and you would possibly get a Kawhi in return. I mean, the trade off's really good, in my opinion. Yeah, that won't that that won't happen. It was just a hypothetical Spurs fans before they get all crazy. But Ben, would you welcome the deuce like like Wesley likes to call him back with open arms? I mean, I wouldn't my, my arms would probably be down at my side. I don't know if I I don't know if they'd be open, but I'd welcome That's them back. A lot. That's a lot. <laughs> I mean <laughs> come on. That's a lot. I, I no, I I'd welcome him back. It wouldn't be an issue, mostly because I also still have a jersey, but I also don't care to burn jerseys. I think that's a waste of time and money. And frankly, it would give me an excuse to wear a jersey of a non-retired player that I have. Yeah. So I, I can only wear David Robinson and Tim Duncan jerseys for so long before people catch on to the shtick. So I would not hate that. He is a position of need for this team, and they have the money to sign him this offseason. And I just, I mean, if it were me, I would love playing for a guy like Steve Ballmer. Dude's a little nuts, but he's the good kind of nuts. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know what they got going on there. I, I'm sure the issue stems from firing Doc Rivers, which, if you ask me, it was never his fault they lost. It's just a cursed franchise. You have to, you have to change your city. You have to change your name. You have to change your jerseys, and no longer be the Clippers and accept their history as part of your history. That's how you break the curse. Yeah, it's Paul George's fault. That's oh, the Clippers stuff. Goodness. Yes, I mean, it's payoff P's fault. Playoff, yeah, playoff P. Give me a fucking break on that. No Payoff, way. payoff P. No oh, L's. Payoff. I was going to no say. L's. <laughs> Although I will say he does catch L's, yeah. but he doesn't he doesn't keep them yeah. in his nickname. Yeah, yeah we he's have building new neighborhoods in LA with all those bricks in the yeah. playoffs. Well, we have a viewer here watching us on Facebook, uh, Doris, and she put Aldridge should be enough. We need Vassell and Walker. I still have Kawhi's jersey. So I'm telling you. There you go. There's still mm -hmm. hope, Ben. There's still hope. 
So you're telling me there's a chance. There's always hope. And let's go with Chelsea. Built on hope. Chelsea, you had a video where you said this is your reaction to the hypothetical question I presented. You got the Lego that you built of Kawhi Leonard and you threw it in the trash. I threw it in the trash. It's in the trash. This was years ago. (laughs) So I don't have it anymore. I never took it out of the trash. Listen, I forgive, but I don't forget. Um, I think it's a business, you know, so when you think of it that way, of course, Spurs fans are going to hypothetically would welcome back Kawhi. I mean, it'd be silly to not welcome back Kawhi if he actually wanted to come back to San Antonio. And I think for anybody that ever bought a Kawhi jersey, they probably still have them. There's I feel like Spurs fans are not the ones to throw away or burn jerseys. We're just not those kind of fans. Um, We're not Cleveland. Not, not Cleveland, thank goodness. But I, uh, I mean, yeah, I welcome him back. Like, all right, let's you know get a championship. Let's make a run. Let's do something. Let's work. But would I, you know, be all about him every single time? No, and that's just me being salty. You're not going to. I'm not going to get. get a, I'm not going to get another Lego if he were to hypothetically come back. So that's <laughs> done in the trash in the dumpster. <laughs> You're not going to go get a but jersey. Do not forget. A new Fiesta uh, themed jersey with Kawhi's number on it. I'd have to think about that. No, there you. That's what I'm saying. He <laughs> starts to grow on you. He starts to grow on you. All right, and Wesley, would you welcome the Deuce back with open arms? You're going to still be salty like Chelsea. All right. Well, I'm I'm glad I got to hear all of your commentary about this because I'm going to play all, off that a little bit. First of all, I still have my Kawhi Leonard shirt. Okay. Uh, <laughs> A jerk, okay, but I use it to dust my my house, so it's it 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 never loses its its charm because it always reminds me that he's a dirt bag and I can no. clean <laughs> with it. No. Um, number two, Rudy, on your point, hey, it is kind of like an ex girlfriend, but when your ex girlfriend's uncle is so crazy like that bastard is, you don't take him back. So there's <laughs> that part too. Um, it's an uncle; it's not a parent. Yeah. I know, but this uncle just happens to be a, a yeah, he kind of acts like it. Um, oh, yeah, but, you know, the the other part is, I mean, I think Spurs fans will welcome him back with open arms while booing. Um, I think that probably is more likely. Um, as for myself, I, you know, I, I'm, I'll i be honest, you know, what, call me a hypocrite, whatever. I mean, um, if you have a chance to get one of the best players out there in the game, you do it. Um, I don't think that that's even a question. You know, the bigger thing, though, in the hypothetical, and I think it's a great question, especially with with what's going on, is, number one, you don't have a ladies rock, a locker room for him to take over, you know, before games. As we know, he likes to apparently steal and, and have his own thing and all those things. I, I kind of go along the lines of, you know, all kidding aside, I think that he actually is a worse teammate now than he was, you know, when he left. I feel like because he's tried to build this, I'm the greatest brand, his uncle and he have done that, that part of the reason why he's unhappy in Clipperland is because when before he arrived, they had a good blue-collar team. Just look at Montrez Harrell. Okay, Montrez Harrell was like the third, you know, type player on that team last year. And they they paid like little to no attention to him. He walked off and went to the Lakers. You know, and I say that only because we've heard other people in that organization say that they don't really care for Kawhi Leonard, for his attitude. They're not really caring about the type of teammate that he is and what they expect and the prima donna status. So, you know, part of that is this, and I, you know, I know it's a, it's, it's not as simple as a yes or no, but the question of, of, of this goes is, is he the right fit to be around the young core of players that the Spurs have right now? You know, would I think that he still would be the best answer hundred percent, because let's be honest, the Spurs don't attract big free agents. We know that they don't. So it would be something that you would have to consider. But ultimately, it's more complex than that. I just really think that you have to look at what he's become. He left the team after winning a title. Let that sink in for a second. He left the team after winning a title. So just food for thought. But the heart wants what the heart wants. You know, Rudy knows that. The heart wants what the heart wants, Rudy. We want another chip. Rudy wants food, and Rudy (laughs) can't have food. So definitely. There you go. I think Rudy's hungry. He, he's on his diet kick, and unfortunately, he can't get the food he likes, like Burger Boy and all the greasy stuff. So he's craving it. Can we have another segment coming up besides this food talk here, please. No, oh, man. <laughs> well, here we we have a a, a viewer here that's uh, asking a question. Uh, he's watching us from Periscope. Valentino Cicini. He puts, if not Kawhi, which other free agent 
uh, Spurs could the Spurs get? So that's the thing. Yeah, there there really is nobody out there. Everybody's already been picked up this uh, this season in the off season going into the free agency talk. There's really not much out there. The biggest, the sexiest move that the Spurs could do in the off season is just retain one DeMar DeRozan. That's it. Other than that, there there really isn't much to talk about. What if DeMar decides to walk? Well, then there, there's your story. You know, go ahead and spin it. Put it out there, Ben. We'll put it out on Project Spurs. <laughs> I don't think you want to spin on that one. No, I don't. I don't. I, I really do like DeMar DeRozan. I, I like him here with the team. I like the way he plays with the the younger core. So if he can stay, I would I would welcome that. I, at this point, I don't think anybody else would, would have any reservations towards that. I, I don't think anybody has a reservation to keep in DeMar. Well, doesn't that answer your question, though? I mean, I mean, you asked, right? It's, who's the best free agent they can get? It's DeMar DeRozan. DeMar. I mean... Can we say that it's anybody different? No. Wait, are you saying you don't want to overpay for Otto Porter Jr.? Oh, Lord. (laughs) And if you don't, then you're crazy. The front office needs to be, I guess, disbanded. (laughs) But we're going to see what kind of scenarios play out. You know, anything can happen in the offseason. It gets nuts out there. Spurs could make a trade, which they normally don't do. You know, maybe they... Find something, a, a deal they like, and they just can't say no. It could happen, you know? So we'll just have to wait and see what happens with that. Oh, man, we have a, a, a viewer from Twitter. He says, LMA, go away. <laughs> and then he puts DeMar versus Kawhi. Who would you take? He puts. I mean, you're putting both guys next to each other. You obviously take Kawhi Leonard because of based on, you know, two-way player and where he ranks in the league. But... Can you get a Kawhi Leonard? I don't know. I think the closest he's going to become coming back to San Antonio is playing with Coach Pop and Team USA. That's it. I mean, let's be real. He's not going to come back to San Antonio. He burned that bridge. He's not coming back. I don't care if the fans want him. He's definitely not going to come back. This is his last option. He'll probably go play overseas before he comes back to San Antonio. All right. Okay. Relax. Calm down. You don't, you don't want any of this, Players. Ben. You don't want any of this. You don't want that. I know heat. it's your month. I know it's March, but you don't want any of this right now. I, I, got, <laughs> a, I got enough madness in me right now. I don't need any. Exactly. Of this, exactly. <laughs> well, I got one thing to, to say before we, we start segueing here into the next segment. I don't know if any of you all caught this, but there was a story that was ran earlier today. I saw it on, on, on Twitter of all places. Can't be good. San Antonio is crazy, man. Like, they're wilding out here with their stimmies, dude, with those stimulus checks. They got people that are just going out there and cashing the whole thing out where banks are putting caps on how much money you can take out of the bank on any given day. Like, if you really have a legit need to take out, you know, maybe a couple grand because you got to pay a bill, go buy some Coke or something. That's that's your prerogative. But the, the bank won't let you pull out an X amount of money because of the stimmies. So... I go on Twitter and I see that somebody on the south side, get this, had both a tiger and a bobcat. Is that what people are buying now with their stimulus checks? Rudy, man, come on now. I, 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 I'm not going to buy a bobcat or a tiger. I mean, I'm scared as hell. From You're going to go for the lion? Those types of animals. You're going to go for the lion? Shit, I, I can barely put up with a cat, man. So I'm not going to go get a bigger <laughs> cat. I mean, that's kind of stupid of me to do. But I, I did see that on the whole tiger and whatever it was. I mean, I don't know. I don't appreciate the fact that when you said people are cashing out their stimmies and then you mentioned, you know, cocaine and you looked at me as if I, I don't <laughs> come anywhere near that. So I don't appreciate that. We know. had some Scarface talk the other day. <laughs> oh, because of the Scarface talk. That's why you looked at me. OK, no. He, I, he meant diet cocaine. Yes, I know. Right. If the there's diet. such a thing as diet cocaine, yeah, even I won't do that. So it'll help no. you lose weight, Rudy. Oh, my it'll work's help you not watching this at all. <laughs> so I mean, I thought, I, I thought Joe Exotic was in jail. Oh Lord, here we go. Joe Exotic is sitting right next to me <laughs> over here. Joe. You're just giving Rudy more fuel, Wesley. But it, it's only in San Antonio. I'm sur- I'm surprised because one person did allude to this earlier this week on Twitter. And Chelsea, I got a kick out of it. They said that. Corpus is the new Florida of Texas, and that's not a compliment. So I, w- oh. I would think that that would happen over in Corpus Christi of all places, there's, not not San Antonio. 
Okay, let me tell you this. I'm not going to talk bad about Corpus because I don't want anybody watching this that's from Corpus to come <laughs> at me. <laughs> but let me just say it is not... Um, it was never my first choice to live, okay? Oh, man. <laughs> but, but, but did you all know that, like, Texas is, like, number one out of the country for people having exotic pets? So this is normal. Texans are crazy, and they're always having these big cats and tigers, and I, I'm just, I'm not surprised. I'm really not surprised. That is odd. You know, what, what happened if you saw that going on in your neighborhood, Wesley? You walk out and they just raided a house and it's just nothing but exotic animals. Hey, I'm from a small town. Normal. <laughs> just a normal day. <laughs> like that, right? <laughs> a normal stroll down the down the neighborhood. Wow. <laughs> you know, you can hunt a bobcat though, so why buy one? When you unless you want it. You're talking alive. San Antonio, Chelsea. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, we're about to lose Ben here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just you can. You can hunt them. And I shouldn't be that surprised coming from Florida, people who are <laughs> friends with alligators and think that alligators are good pets. So I don't, I don't know why I'm surprised. I don't, I don't, I, you know, it's, it's crazy. I didn't, but if I'm, I'm going to have to be that guy and I'm going to have to say a bobcat only costs $1,400. Is that what you're telling me right now? I, I feel like that is a very low number for such an exotic and wild animal. It's two animals. It was a tiger and a bobcat. So it was kind of like a two for so one. So more so. That's actually so kind hold, of a bargain. So right? hold the hold the phone up. See, so it's fourteen hundred per person. So if you've got a family of what two, you've got that's fifty six hundred right there. So there you go. Okay. Now you got some coin. Yeah, you got some coin to play with. Yeah, and then Joel oh M Joel M Colon from Facebook. He just put up here too. He goes, did they catch a, a tiger a couple weeks ago on the south side too? Got to be the yeah. same dude. It might very well be the same dude. I think it was on the southwest side of town that they had a tiger roaming out there. They had to come and pick him up because uh, he jumped the fence. And then they had another one that they found in somebody else's yard because they had him in a pen when it was freezing cold. So animal control had to come out and take that. I'm like, how many damn tigers are just roaming around on the south side, dude? Like, that's insane, you know? Hanging out. Yeah. I mean, it's animals, yeah, but at least y'all don't have to put up with crackheads in the alley behind me. I mean, those guys trying to jump the fence and... <laughs> I mean, they're trying to steal the flower pots and everything so they can get a score. I probably would rather deal with the damn bobcats than I would with these people. Oh, Rudy. Well, maybe that's the new guard animal. Instead of a dog, oh, you just get a go. tiger. There you yeah. go. All right. Not so let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and transition back to some San Antonio Spurs talk. I just thought that was hilarious. I saw that earlier today, so I had to kind of mention that on here. But I want to ask a real, you know, solid question here about Lonnie Walker. Lonnie Walker. He's looked great, you know, in these uh, this last couple of games, you know, these last two games, this last game against the Pistons. He looked really good. You know, I think they they had him with they think that this last game, didn't they have him starting? He was in the starting uh, five, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. So my question is, should they start Lonnie or should they just have him come off the bench with that second unit and kind of play that six man role? What say you, Ben? Oh, that is a tough one. It's easy. I mean, I think right right now, as as the roster stands, with no DeMar DeRozan, he should be starting. But if DeMar DeRozan comes back, I think he should be the first guy off the bench. I I really think it's that simple, and he can give you a scoring punch off the bench, and you you can still play him starter minutes. It's not like Pop is playing anybody more than thirty five minutes a game. There's plenty of minutes to go around with these guys, and there's plenty of opportunity. So. I say have him come off the bench, let him run with those guys, and maybe beat up on some second unit dudes. I can see that. I, I, I'd, I'd be down with that. I'd be down with that. And let's go ahead and get from, hear from you, Chelsea. What do you think? Do you think Lonnie should be a starter or come off the bench in that six man role? I personally like him as a starter. Um, the past few games that I've seen where he is starting, I just feel like he's a little bit more energetic, uh, more free on the court. I personally like Lonnie better coming off. As a starter, then oppose the bench. I mean, last night he what, like Ben was saying, you know, no starters really playing over 35 minutes. I think Lonnie played 29 minutes last night. Um, and I don't know. I just, I personally like him better as a starter. It's plain and simple. Okay. What about you, Wes? What do you think? Starter or are you going to bench? Come have him coming off the bench. Okay. Well, I, I think 
honestly, I, I agree with Ben about that. If if you, if Demar is playing, you know, he's you know, Monty's got to come off the bench because it's going to limit his touches. But I, I go one further than that. I I really would prefer to see. I know it sounds crazy, but I prefer to see Keldon and Lonnie both come off the bench um, with a Patty Mills. I mean, you got scores in DJ. You've got playmaker there, DeRozan and DJ. You know, got a young Vassell. Why not let him get some starts in there as well? And then you, they already dominate in the second quarter. Can you imagine if you had Keldon and Lonnie both coming off the bench with Patty and and you know uh, Rudy? That's dang. That's better than most starting fives in in the league. So you know, I I think honestly he'd be better off the bench. That's just me. Hey, what about you, Rudy? Think he's a starter, or do you want to have him, have him come off the bench? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I like him as a starter. I mean, he he kind of gives you that that momentum you've got with DJ and also with uh, Keldon coming, you know, starting five. But for me, it makes more sense of him coming off the bench, whether it be the sixth man, you know, seventh man, bench, whatever. It doesn't matter as long as he comes off the bench because I think that second unit needs that push. You've got Derek White coming in with the second unit. Uh, him and Derek, I think, would give them, you know, a nice one-two punch coming off the bench. I think, you know, with DeMar coming back, possibly seeing Lonnie move to the bench, I, I like that a little bit better. I really do. I mean, I also liked him better with that, you know, big seven-foot hair do he had, but, you know, <laughs> that's in the past. Uh, but also, like I said, the more of the, the bench, I mean, he's going to give you minutes regardless. He's going to give you perf- or quality, you know, regardless where he was a starter or off the bench. I just like that second unit. That second unit to me sometimes is it's hit or miss. But if you add Lonnie Walker, you add that enthusiasm, you have that athleticism. It makes that second unit a lot better. So that's why I think coming off the bench is a lot better for Lonnie. But again, like Ben says, you know, Pop doesn't play very many people 35 minutes at all. Just to me, it's a it's a coin toss, honestly, Joe. I mean, he's going to be good either regardless on either way. He still hasn't developed into the player that a lot of a lot of Spurs fans want, and probably even the coaches want. He probably hasn't developed fully into that. But need to say, I say off the bench. First man off the bench is fine with me. Okay, I can respect that. Um, for me, it's kind of a toss up as well. You know, he does have value as a player out there on the court. He can do some amazing things with his athleticism and his speed. As we saw in yesterday's game against the Pistons, he had that really insane behind the back pass to find a cutting Drew Eubanks who caught the ball. You know, he, he got the dish and he just went up for the dunk. You know, so Lonnie has been better at distributing the ball um, and with his court vision. You know, he's been seeing things a little bit different, I think. And I've also liked his shot as of late. He's got a really good mid-range jumper uh, going on, real fluid. You like the release. You like the stroke that he has. Rotation of the ball looks good. Um, I like him doing that uh, probably more often than not. You know, I, I don't just don't want him camping out beyond the beyond the arc. I like him when he's slashing. I like him when he's hitting that mid range jumper. You know, he's I understand that, you know, he's still developing as a player um, and the ceiling, I think, is going to is it can be higher for Lonnie. I just don't think that we've seen the best that he has to offer yet, which is a good thing for Spurs fans. I think we just need to be a little bit more patient with Lonnie. Uh, we were patient with Dejounte, and look at this, look at this, look what happened with Dejounte. He's been having a great year so far. So I think the same thing can happen with Lonnie Walker. Um, what are your thoughts on that, Ben? Think he still needs some some time to develop? Yeah, he probably needs a little bit of time, and you know, I think getting him as much run as he can with different groups of guys on this on this team is going to be good because then you, he becomes more versatile in who he can play with and. You know, you you when you look at analytics and things like that, you hope for a great plus minus with whatever group he's in. You you know, you, of course, there you want everybody to have a good. You want everybody to be in the plus when you're on the court with them, regardless of who it is. But Lonnie Walker is that guy who can be you know a common denominator for all the good lineups that the Spurs may have. So I think that's that's got to be taken into consideration, but. Yeah, Lonnie, Lonnie's got a little bit of work to do. I mean, he there are times he's a bit reckless on his drives. He's not always looking for an open guy when he gets into the paint and the defense collapses on him. But he has made a lot of strides in the time he's been in San Antonio, and I think we also need to recognize that while we're here. Yeah, no doubt. You know, one of the things that we're going to also transition to right now as we get away from our Lonnie Walker talk is we're going to talk about one Devin Vassil. Devin Vassil a rookie, mind you, at that as well. He's been playing some good minutes, you know, this season. Usually that, that doesn't happen for a rookie. 
Coach Pop doesn't like to play his rookies. He usually delegates them to the uh, to the hell of the G League, you know, so they can go ahead and develop his players, which is the Spurs way. It seems to work more often than not. Spur, you know, the player develops, comes back, and is able to, you know, contribute to the team. Uh, Devin Vassell was a high draft pick. You know, a lot of Spurs fans were not happy with this pick. They're like, that's not a sexy pick. I don't like him. He's not going to be what the Spurs need right now, you know, and lo and behold, look at what, look what, at what is happening with Devin Vassell. He's growing up right before our eyes. The kid can play both sides of the ball quite well. He has a lot of length. He's dangerous on the defensive end. He can run, you know, he might not be the quickest guy out there, but the kid can get to his spots, plays really solid defense, doesn't make a lot of mistakes. And then on the offensive end, he has a really nice stroke. It's beautiful. I, I just like watching him shoot the ball from beyond the arc. That real high arcing shot with the, I mean, he just has a beautiful release, great rotation with the ball when it leaves his hands. I mean, he just looks like he's going to be a special type of scorer. It looks like he's just a pure shooter. Like he, he just has that gift, Ben. I've been really impressed what I've seen uh, so far out of Devin Vassil. Um, I know he still needs time to develop, but I like everything I'm seeing early on with this young man. And yesterday's game, he paid, played 21.19 minutes. He scored 13 points in those 21 minutes of play. You like those things out of him. You know, and he had three assists. He had three rebounds. He didn't make a lot of mistakes. So, again, that's the thing that you like about this kid. He had five personal fouls. And I attribute that to the inexperience. He's going to have to learn. He's only going to get better with the time he's given out there on the court. What else can you tell us about this young man, Devin, about Devin Vassell, Ben? I mean, I, I was talking him up pretty hard during the draft process. Love his game. Kid who can guard two through three or two, th two through four, rather. And he can probably play offense at those positions as well. And he comes from a really good program at Florida State where, I mean, they just they had Patrick Williams go number four this year, and Patrick Williams was the sixth man on that team. Nobody really plays more than 20, 25 minutes on those teams. They, and that's just the way Leonard Hamilton, you know, runs his squad. He, go, he legitimately goes 10 or 11 guys deep. And so I think that that is pretty big going into the draft because you realize, all right, you know, at the NBA level, I'm probably going to play similar, maybe even less minutes. So I just got to be ready when coach calls my number and I get in the game. So I think that played a huge role. And as you can see, shooting the three ball really well. Um, there, there were some questions before the draft. There was a video that was going around and his shot looked ugly. It did not look good at all. And people were concerned, but he apparently turned those around in pre-draft process, you know, when he was working out for teams because still got drafted in the lottery. So He's got to be feeling pretty good, and I think the Spurs are feeling pretty good about that pick. Yeah, another kid that I like, too, is I, I, I kind of like uh, Trey Jones, and I also like uh, Keita Bates-Diop. I think the kid has some some potential, you know, in the limited minutes that we've seen out of both of them. You, you kind of like them. You can see that maybe at some point in time with development, these other assets uh, can actually contribute to the team, you know, maybe sometime in the near future. So I think the future is bright as far as the young uh, core that the Spurs have. They just need time to develop. Unfortunately, Spurs Twitter and Spurs fans in general want instant success. They don't want to wait, and we do not have patience. They want the, the, the Spurs to be in championship contention once again. So we lack patience, Ben, and therefore we want a trade now. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get Chelsea's take. Chelsea, what do you think of this young kid out here, Devin Vassell? You know, Joe, when you and I first met and did our first podcast together, we talked about Devin. And I think for me, not only his time on the court is, you know, exceptional, but he's also just a great, um, what's the word? I mean, not only athlete, but a good teammate. You know, he's one of those guys that you want to work with, you want to learn from, and he's willing to learn. And that was something that um, I read up on is that he's always asking questions, you know, to assistant coaches and to the coach. And he's trying to learn. He's trying to find more exactly what it is that the Spurs organization wants and needs from him. I mean, he's a rookie. You know, he has so much room to develop. And you mentioned when we first drafted him, you know, maybe Spurs fans were like, I don't know about this guy. I don't know if he's a right fit. I personally think he's one of the best fits because he wants to learn and he's that sponge 
that Popovich is willing to work with. And that's exactly what Pop does. You know, he likes to gravitate towards those younger players, teach them his ways, and then they develop into, you know, the Tim Duncan, Tony Parkers, or whoever. Um, and that's what I'm kind of hoping to see from Devin if he chooses to be a spur for life. You actually saw that uh, DeJounte Murray's kind of taking a liking to the kid. He likes his style of play because DeJounte was praising him after the game. He was like going and rubbing his head like a little, you know, a big brother does with a little brother because he's proud of him. You know, he, he knows the work that they put in behind the scenes and he's proud of this kid, you know, kind of showing what he can do, you know, because his potential is really high, I believe. Rudy, let's go ahead and go to you. Give us your take on one Devin Vassil. Uh, he's good. I'm dead. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, the... Simple. <laughs> See, what I, what I like about Devin is, you know, he brings a defensive-minded basketball player. He's a, He can score. He can shoot the ball. But one of the biggest cons coming into the draft was that he couldn't create his own shot. Well, that's perfect for the Spurs because he doesn't have to create his own shot. He lets the game come to him. He lets the flow come to him as well. So we're seeing that with Devin. You don't need to be a – you don't need to create your own shot. The ball will get to you. He's in the right place at the right time every single time making plays both on the defense and offensive side very smart kid i mean honestly man you're probably talking about a two-way player uh for the spurs for many years to come you also have like dejounte is going to be probably a good two-way player keldon will probably end up being a really good two-way player so getting three guys to go along with like a Derek white as well is beneficial for this team and the good thing is is they're all young even though my partner in crime, Carolina Teague, says, well, Derek White's old. He's 26. I mean, come on. I <laughs> I am like 52, I think. I'm not going to give my real age out because I don't do that. But, you know, I'm, I'm really 42. Um, but I, you know, he's they're all young. And that's the thing is like with Devin, he's just a rookie and he's so athletic that I don't even have a ceiling for him right now. I can't say, well, he's going to be just as good as this guy, or he's going to be just like that guy. I mean, really the ceiling, I don't have a ceiling for him right now, which is a good thing, but yeah, great kid. Love him. Coach pop loves him. Who cares what pop says, right? I mean, as long as pop says, you know, he loves him. We all love him. That's, that's all that matters. Yeah. And we got our good friend, Carolina Teague watching. Oh crap. I'm in trouble. <laughs> she says, Hey y'all said, Hey Carolina, what's up? Thanks for watching. And we also have a question here from Ted Rowe watching us from YouTube. Uh, let me go ahead and put his uh, comment on here. He puts, once Vassell gets some muscle weight, his defense will get even better. Well, he's not lying. You know, that's the thing that the kid needs. He needs to bulk up a little bit. He needs some tortilla. I don't know if uh, we can maybe have Carolina make him some beans and send him his way, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm perfect for gaining weight. I can definitely take Devin under my, my wing here. There you go. Show him some burger boy. There you go. Jeez, and when Ted Rowe also had another question, he had put, do you think La Lonnie Walker IV is studying DeRozan's game? I don't know, to tell you the truth. I just think that his game is developing based on what they're working with him on behind the scenes, you know, with the coaching staff and whatnot, trying to play to his strengths, you know, and those strengths, of course, are his speed and athleticism. You know, the only thing that they need a, I think that they're trying to work on is his better decision making. And he needs to just calm down a little bit and stay more focused because he has a lot of missed opportunities, point blank at the rim. If he can convert on those, I mean, he would be something special, you know, he'd be pretty dangerous. But I think it's just him that he just needs to develop a little bit more and, and learn a little, you know, more control. Uh, we also have Jason Salinas here. He says, He's getting, and I believe he's referring to Devin Vassell. He says he's getting the rookie treatment from the refs on defense. The refs will learn to respect the this aggressive defensive style. I, I have to agree with them. You know, the kid, he's a rookie. You're not going to get the calls right away. You got to earn that respect. Ben knows about that. You got to earn it. <laughs> you know it's what? True. And DeMar still hasn't earned that respect because they don't. I don't know why. He gets crapped on so much. Like, he can literally get his head taken off. It is nothing but a flesh wound. Play on. You know, I'm just like, come on now. I, I don't know why they, they swallow their whistles when it's DeMar. I, I don't, I don't get that. Because he has the word spurs across his chest. True facts. that. True that. I detect I mean, facts are facts. Yeah, so let's go ahead and go to you, Wesley. Wesley, 
What do you think about one Devin Vassell? Well, I know that uh, when the, the draft analysts were talking about this whole process, you know, there was a lot of disappointment. Hey, that's not going to be as nearly a strong a draft as what we've seen. And, you know, let's give a little bit of praise, not just to Devin, but also, I mean, I, I thought that there was probably more NBA ready players in this draft, but maybe not a superstar quality caliber, you know, take over cornerstone franchise kind of guy. Um, I agree with everybody's commentary. I, I think that uh, Devin Vassell is going to be um, a very strong player for this team for years to come. And, and as Rudy said, I mean, I, I see him in that two-way role, um, really being one of the top defenders. He's going to be a leader in steals for the NBA for many years in the future when he finally gets enough minutes. Uh, you know, one of the things that I that I see in him that I, I think is kind of going back to what you had said, Joe, early on, not only is – Pop not used to playing a rookie to the extent that he is with, with Devin. But we have to also remember there was no off season, none whatsoever. So how much more is it impressive that his instincts and his ability to understand the game. And as I, I believe it was Rudy who said it, that lets the game come to him. The moment's not too big, not afraid of that time that he's out there on the court. Doesn't look, you know, doesn't let things bother him. That's the one problem is as the, somebody was asking about Lonnie, that's the one problem that Lonnie has uh, that has been a little bit of, a, of a, uh, uh, an issue has been that when he makes mistakes, sometimes he gets down on himself or sometimes it, it, it corresponds to something else. We're seeing that improve slowly but slowly. That is starting to get a little bit better. But with Devin, he, he just plays on. I mean, if he makes a mistake, it's go down on the next, next side of the court and I'm, I'm going to take and guard my man. I'm going to make a play, going to help my team. So – uh, very impressive. Uh, I thought he was one of the steals of the draft, to be honest. I really felt, I don't know, Ben may disagree with me, but I really felt like 11 was probably too low for the guy. I think that, honestly, he probably should have been in the top 10 somewhere. But you know what? I'm glad we got him. I'm glad he slipped to number 11. He was a steal at number 11. I, I figured Using he would go. Using my 2020 hindsight vision, I would also agree that he, was, he slipped. But in the pre-draft process, there were some people who actually thought 11 was too high for him. Hmm. And a lot of it was because he was pretty gangly. He was lithe. Uh, I mean, he, he, his measurements at school were six, seven and 195 pounds. I assume he weighs a little more than that now, but you know, there, there were some legitimate concerns when he, when he was coming into the draft. Of course, I feel like those have been addressed and he's going to be just fine. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it, when when people were mock drafting, eleven was not a slide for him. But knowing what we know now, yeah, I, I think you could argue it was. So you think the Spurs did a a better pick in getting one Devin Vassell versus you know the Spurs wanted at one well Spurs fans at one time wanted Precious Achua, you know, or Obi Toppin. I mean, I know Wesley, Ob Ob screaming Obi's praises the whole time. It was just not meant to be. To kick Wesley out for this because that's, that's <laughs> topping. Give me a break. That's he was he was riding high on Obi, hey, man. Y'all settle down. He can dunk the ball like nobody's business. <laughs> Can't do anything else, but okay. I'm, so can Dwight Howard in his career suck? Well, he well that, no. that's that's not a lie. He's already thirty five years old. Sucked. I mean, he was the best center in the league for five years, and he carried a team to a finals. Granted, they didn't win that finals, but. I don't know okay. if I'd say they sucked. I like think the last three or four years have been pretty terrible. I'll give you that. Yeah. yeah and what's with his shorts? I mean, they're getting shorter every oh, single Lord. year. That's that's He's emotionally unstable. You, you don't you don't <laughs> don't poke the bear, Chelsea. Don't poke the bear, because Rudy's going to go on a tangent. That's some talk for the rated R <laughs> sports cast. He's got he's got the John Stockton short shorts. <laughs> oh Lord, here we crazy. go. John Stockton shorts are like the Fab Five compared to what Dwight Howard's right now. <laughs> I know what Rudy's getting at, man. That's what I'm telling you. This is going to be talk for rated R. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep it clean because it's your show, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm telling you all guys, if I get, I was on the rated R sports cast a couple of times with Rudy, and I, I was so bad, I, I embarrassed Rudy. So just to tell you all. Yeah. yeah, it happens. We, 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 we had some crazy discussions, some crazy stuff. But we'll talk to you all about that off the air. <laughs> but let's I'm move on here. for the divorce that I had. Oh, I Lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go ahead and uh, start bringing this to a close here because I want to go ahead and talk real quick 
about the one thing that we all can geek out on. You know, this thing with two shots, we just don't talk, you know, San Antonio Spurs basketball. We can also talk whatever the hell we want to talk about. And most of us being geeks, we're all excited about the Justice League Snyder Cut that's going to be coming out. It'll be available for streaming on HBO Max on Thursday. I have had some friends of mine that have already had, let's say, pre-screening access to this. I have not seen the pre-screener. They have. And everybody has said, no spoilers here, that is, it's everything you heard about and more. So I said, okay, you all are hyping it up. You know, you're, you're, you're hyping it up to such levels. You know, I, it's, it's intriguing to me. Let's put it like that. Let's go ahead and go around the horn here. Let's get everybody's thoughts. Chelsea, are you, are you excited about the Snyder Cut or do you not know what I'm talking about? No, I know what you're talking about, but I'm just not as well versed um, when it comes to everything that has to go on with Justice League. But I watched the preview and or the trailer of it, and it looks intense, and it I'm does. super pumped. I think what I like so much about it is the darkness. I like the dark, the um, feel that it gives. I, I'm all for that. I like. Dark. And I love that Jared Leto is still playing um, Joker, which I don't know if that was already a thing. Um, isn't Ben Affleck supposed to be like Batman or something? Yeah. Okay, so I'm like intrigued by this. I'm, I'm super pumped. And yeah, I'm ready. I, I just don't know like all the history and all the details behind it. Well, so you better I'm get ready. your popcorn and a seat cushion because this sucker is yeah. going to oh. be like four hours. You, you go. Oh, I'm ready. I'm yeah, ready. You're going to learn today. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, Ben. This, this man, this movie has. There was a lot of stuff that went on behind the scenes of this movie that was, that might be more dramatic than what you actually see in the movie. To be honest, um, from what I understand, the original movie was about thirty percent of what Snyder shot and filmed, and seventy percent was what Joss Whedon filmed, and that was people's biggest issue. So we're getting full Snyder cut. It's all of his footage, everything that he filmed, the way he wanted the you know the film to be written, directed, all of that. Um, and you know there were there were some other controversies that we can get into another time that involved Joss Whedon, but we we don't really have time to talk about all that. Um, but the from what I understand, it's longer, so we're going to get more fleshed out characters. We're going to have. Um, we're actually going to have Iris West who becomes, uh, or yes, Iris West who becomes Barry Allen's wife down the road. Um, she's going to appear in this movie. She was in one of the trailers. She was the woman that the flash rescued from the car right. that was overturning. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this movie looks fantastic. We got dark side. We have a completely different looking Steppenwolf who looks much better. I think there's going to be granny goodness in this one who is an, also an excellent villain um, talks about Green Lantern appearances. I mean, this this movie has all the hype, man. And as soon as it comes out on Thursday, I would love to be watching it. And you know what's probably going to happen? We're going to have one Jeff Garcia watch it and absolutely hate it. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Is he like the food critic or oh, food, the movie critic? You, you have no idea, Chelsea. <laughs> No idea. He's very particular on how he likes his comic book movies. I, I love to talk. Is it doesn't have Star Wars before yeah. it. That's why. I, I, I love to talk about the last Star Wars with him because I, you know, oh, I like the movie. So, God, you know. dude. And he oh, so hates them, I guess. One. Don't don't ever He's get him started with that. I'll never ask him. But wait, can I just ask a really dumb question? Yeah. What's the hype with the Snyder guy? I, I don't I don't understand it. I don't get it yet. He. He is the same guy who directed the movie 300. He's got. He he's initially got was really supposed to, yeah. He was yes. supposed to do the whole movie, but uh, I guess his daughter got sick or something it happened. Was, he died. Yes, that was one of it. Like, I think he his daughter died. was kidnapped. Died, yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. Crazy with, yeah, with his family going on. He had to step away from the movie. He couldn't finish, to, he couldn't finish it. And that's why Joss Whedon stepped in. They, I think, they brought him in because of his experience with the Avengers movies. Yeah, yeah. What so it's just the style that Snyder brings. Yes. Why everybody's so pumped? Okay. Yes. They like that grittiness, that style that he brings, uh, as yeah. far as the cinematography like and all that. You know, that's really well done. He, he has a huge cult following. Yeah. Because because of some of the other movies he's done, and 
Didn't I want to? Didn't he also make Man of Steel? Yeah, yeah, he okay. did. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and that was a good one. I like that one. That was a good movie. Yeah, it was better. It was a hell of a lot better than Superman Returns. I'll tell you that. Oh, man. let's act like that never never even happened. Don't bring me back to 2006 like that. Don't do that <laughs> well, I don't know if you don't all caught it, but 2006. the new series that came out, uh, Superman and Lois, that's actually been fire. That has been so good. If you haven't watched it, check it out. But let's go ahead and get Rudy's take. Rudy, you excited about the Snyder Cut? You're going to be sitting down on your little bunion pillow for four hours, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would love to say exactly how I'm going to be feeling that day. But again, this is a PG show. This is a family show. Oh, so we're not going to get that far into it. I'm going to say, I'm going to go as far as to say I am excited as Ben is. I mean, what got me hooked on Snyder was Watchmen. He directed Watchmen. Yeah. And I mean, if you haven't seen Watchmen, I mean, you just you getting all that stuff, you know, from Watchmen, 300, Dawn of the Dead, uh, Sucker Punch. I mean, there's a lot of movies he's done, but the Snyder Cut, man, Jesus, it's going to be so good. You, like Ben said, you're getting Dark Side, Granny Goodness, The Side's going to be in this one. Uh, Stephen Wolf, you're probably going to get a lantern. Jeff is freaking out because apparently Martian Manhunter is going to make an appearance, which we've uh. been, like waiting for. I don't know if that's the big reveal, but oh. man, it's. He technically was in the original one, yeah. but he yeah. never took his Martian Manhunter form. So that's yeah. Well, technically, he's in Man of Steel too, apparently. So yeah. yes, that's um, right. that's well, you know, the thing is, I'm glad we're getting the Snyder cut because Joss Whedon, when they brought him in, yes, he did the Avengers, he did all that. But I'm just gonna say something, and I'm sorry to all the kids listening, because Joe, you have a million kids that watch the Two Shot Podcast. <laughs> so if you want to bleep it out, be my guest. But Joss Whedon fucked up the entire Justice League universe. And we need it. We need a revival of it. And Zack Snyder came in and he's doing that. He's giving us what we want, exactly what we want. We're not going to have this Joss Whedon, you know, little, I'm not even going to say, it. I'm going to stop right there. But you get what I'm saying. We're getting the Snyder cut. That's all I'm going to say. Chelsea, you, you probably want to watch this two or three times, but beforehand, Man of Steel, uh, what is it? Aquaman, Wonder Woman, all those movies. Check them out. Get you ready for it. Batman versus Superman wasn't great, but it'll get you ready for it. Uh, but yeah, we're getting the Snyder Cut. I'm excited. I'm watching it Thursday morning, and I'm going to the doctor at four o'clock that day. So if he says you're gonna die, I'm gonna die a happy man because I saw the Snyder Cut. <laughs> My God. But Ted Rowe was asking if this is gonna be canon or is there no DC canon? No, I think this one is canon. It's part of the yeah. canon. The one that they're acting like it never happened is the original uh, theatrical cut of the Justice League. So, Wesley, mm -hmm. give us your take, brother. What are you thinking, man? Well, okay. So, first of all, I'm turning my Twitter off all day Thursday. Oh, my. Because, listen, I am really? like, I have to get home from work to watch it. So, I've got to, like, be like, la, 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 the whole day so I don't hear anything. But y'all, I'm telling you, you guys are going to go off on Twitter and have all this stuff. I can't help but see it. I see the stuff and I'm like, oh, notification, oh, notification. Uh, I promise I'll be good. Yeah. I'm, I won't put spoilers up there and ruin it for everybody. I'll be, I'll be honest. I, I'm, I'm really excited about the, about the, the Flash uh, part of this and, and especially um, the Superman part of this too because there, there's some really good storylines there. You know, I, I agree. I wasn't a, just a giant fan of uh, Batman versus Superman. But, you know, I, I feel like there's more – to come here and, and I can't wait to see the Snyder cut and what he's going to do and the storylines as they, they progress through this. But the stuff with the flash is just going to be epic. I, I am just ex, ex, super excited to, to see this. And, you know, again, uh, all the villains that you guys said, I mean, listen, if, if they all coalesce, that's going to be awesome, but I'm just going to enjoy the heck out of this. Yeah. It's going to be so good. I'm a huge 300 fan. So to me, that's what I know him best as and the best Snyder you know, movie in my mind is is 300. So I'm excited to see that same brand of action as as he brings it to this entire you know universe. Look at this. We got a man after my own heart because I had set this because I did the Countdown City Geek Cast yesterday, and I'm always the Russian judge on that show. You know, because we get out and we talk about all all things in the geek universe, and we got Tim Rodriguez watching us, and he says, "I'm gonna be honest, Joe. I think it's gonna be ass." Wow. How dare you, sir? <laughs> I'm just saying. Wait, but why? Why what? would he even say that? What's it's it's because the logic is, and it's the same thing that I, I kind of went in with as well. 
I'm going to watch the movie with an open mind and I'm just going to try to enjoy it. But when usually when movies get overhyped to such degrees as this, it's hard for them to fall or to, I guess, really coalesce and deliver on the expectations of the fans. Because a lot of fans, especially for a film such as this, they have really big expectations. They're the biggest expectations you can think of because this is a film that should have, should have never been made. It's only been made or come to light because of the fans demand for this to have to happen and good thing you know hbo uh, max which is owned by warner media went ahead and uh, gave the green light to make this happen so this is a big day for for all fans and Tim, Joe, it's Tim kind of Rodriguez, right yeah okay name me a snyder movie that has sucked so far mm. sucker punch you can't i mean <laughs> sucker oh, punch <laughs> no no it had its moments which one? Which one did you say? Sucker, Sucker Punch. Punch. I mean, it, he, he said, it was still a good movie. I mean, you can't say he's directed a bad movie. You really cannot. So, no, not a definitively thoroughly bad movie. No, that's yeah. hard to do. No. Okay. Well, I'm going to say you this. Go out of your way to make that happen. I'm going to say this. If he's right and it really is bad, okay, Joe, I expect you to PM me immediately. And tell me so that I don't waste a Thursday watching it. Okay? No, you know what? I'm going to so. troll you and I'm going to say it's good. So you'll waste four hours and I'm just going to sit wow. back and laugh. <laughs> I'm going to watch it burn. <laughs> I'm going to watch it burn. That's, that's spiteful, sir. <laughs> I'll be evil like that. But Wrong. one thing I wanted to talk about, too. So let's go ahead and move on from the Snyder Cut. And let's go ahead and mention Falcon and the Winter Soldier. That kicks off. So we get the Justice League Snyder Cut on Thursday. Then... If you finish watching that, right, let's say you stay up and you watch that Snyder Cut and then you wait up again because Disney will release the Falcon and the Winter Soldier promptly at 2.02 a.m. our time, which is 12, I believe, 12.02 at mid, it's 12.02 p.m. on Pacific time. So it's 2.02 a.m. here, Central Standard Time. And you can watch the first episode. There's only going to be six of them. I got to be honest from what I've seen from the trailer and everything. It, it looks interesting. It's intriguing to me. But I'm going into this knowing, knowing what they did to me with WandaVision. They, they had all this great story. You know, it was a great story. They, what, they wove it perfectly. But the end, it left a lot to be desired. You know, it was a lot of missed opportunities, wasted opportunities. And I'm not going to let the house of the mouse do that shit to me anymore i'm done with them wow. i had enough so i'm wow. gonna go in with joe, low expectations on, on. joe you got sour grapes from one show no they ain't gonna fleece me again ben Listen, no joe joe they one word always disney is always setting you up for the next big easter egg no i'm no i'm done what one word joe mandalorian mandalorian that i mean come on season two and it, it was decent, you know, but there was some issues that I had with that too. You have I'm just saying. Critical. We got the Russian judge, folks. Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm tough. Yeah. I'm tough. And and Six Disney, I'm not going to let them fleece me again with Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So I'm going in with lower expectations. Well, as if you're not paying for Disney Plus already, like they're going to fleece you. Well, this oh, is what happens because, again, this is the way you go ahead and you watch the shows you want. And then when those shows are done, you cancel your subscription. And then when your show comes out again, you go ahead and reopen it again. This is the way. Well, it's the Mexican way. Let's put it like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know how it is, Chelsea, Dang Rudy. It's, it's true. <laughs> I've done that many times. Not with Disney Plus, but I've done that many times. And there you go. So let's go ahead and get your take, Rudy. What do you think? You're going to be excited and hyped for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Yeah, I mean, let's just get the, you know, cat out of the bag. I got Disney Plus because of, you know, Jesse and Camp Kiki Waka and oh, all that stuff. God, I didn't care less about Marvel. Jesse has Star the Wars worst intro thing. song ever, Rudy. <laughs> ever. No, man, Waka Kiki Waka. Exactly. My daughter sings that all damn day, and I'm like, holy cow. I'm getting, I'm going to shoot myself if I hear that song again. But, you know, hey, when it comes to Falcon and Soldier, I, I agree with Joe on the sense of WandaVision. I mean, it was set up perfectly. And the last episode for me was a letdown. It really was a letdown. I'm hoping the Falcon and the Winter Soldier doesn't do that because my boy, John Walker, U.S. agent, is making his appearance. 
one of my favorite Marvel characters, a US agent. I hope they do him justice and they don't give me like five seconds of screen time like they did the White Vision. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm excited for it, but I am going to go in with not low expectations like Joe because nobody peed in my post toasties. I'm going to go in with just, you know, mid expectations. I'm going to say it's going to be good. Is it going to be great? I don't know. After WandaVision, my, my expectations aren't that high. But this is another chance. And I hate the fact we get six episodes only. I mean, you bastards have all this money and you can't make more than six episodes. I'm hoping that it just pays off better than WandaVision did. And what if these episodes are short and they're like less than 30 minutes each? I don't get it. Disney has so much money. Marvel has so much potential, and you're giving us, like I said, six episodes. I mean, it doesn't it work? It only works for like Cobra Kai. I mean, that's all it works for me because I, I need more Marvel stuff. DC is about to blow Marvel out of the water if they keep pulling this bullshit. Yeah, First we got all, some comments here. Let's read these real quick. Tim Lopez, T. Lopez from uh, Periscope said he's looking forward to to seeing Loki. I, I can see that. Loki looks dope. I'm not going to lie. That's great. And uh, Tim Rodriguez says, Loki's going to be awesome. And then Ted Rowe again, he put West Coast Avengers being set up. Can't deny that. Can't deny that. And then Ted Rowe again with White Vision and U.S. Agent. So I guess he's referring to the WandaVision. Episode. Well, the West Coast Avengers. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, so well, go ahead, Ben. Guys, they're making these shows so short because they are setting us up for the movies where they want to make their big bucks. They don't make big bucks from the shows. They get people interested so that when these guys become main characters in movies, people will go to see it and they will spend more money once theaters are open, of course, and everything is safe to go. People will be spending tons and Wesley. tons of money on these movies. Hit the mute button on Ben. Look at that. I just got Tony Reality, folks. <laughs> Look at Wesley. Wesley puts Joe is the Spurs Twitter of Disney Plus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of, I that's agree incredible. with that. Wow. <laughs> just shit all over it. Who cares, right? Yeah. Okay, let's get Ooh. Wesley's take. Wesley, let us have it, man. Falcon Winter Soldier. Okay. Can we agree? And Joe, I'm going to poo poo on you for a second here, my friend. Can we just agree? That isn't it great we have this much to talk about, to geek out about? Because, again, think about how many series of sustainable goodness we're able to talk about. I mean, even even WandaVision, yeah, everybody's right. I mean, the last episode was garbage. Okay, let's just be honest. Okay, But then again, when we watched Game of Thrones back on HBO back in the day, that last season was garbage, too. And we still think highly of that series, right? So I say this, in the COVID world, in the COVID world where everything is shut down, everything has been really hard to come by, I have to give props to Disney, to HBO, to all of the writers and all of the directors that have been putting on these great, great topics of, of, of our favorites, you know, whether it's Marvel Universe, whether it's DC Universe, whatever. We have a chance with you know Justice League and whatnot to watch something we really care about, and I think really honestly, you know, Winter Soldier is going to be it's going to be just as good. I mean, I, I honestly think this is going to be really fun uh, to watch. And I again, I have an open mind about it. I if it's great, awesome, I'm going to enjoy it. If it's not as good as I would expect, then hey, you know what? It still beats sitting down and watching old reruns of Leave It to Beaver. Come on. Jesus Christ! Leave it to me. Age yourself a little bit there. Wesley. Wow. Hey, yes. I'm for, I'm 43. So see, I got a year on you. That year You're matters. 43. For right. Respect You're your, your elder. Respect your elder. What do you even watch? <laughs> Leave it to Beaver on. You don't need TV know. Land. Or I don't think Nickelodeon because has it anymore. TV because Land doesn't. I don't think shows it anymore. Oh, TV Land. I forgot about. Because that. I'm stupid. I'm the only one that has like every cable channel on actual cable, not streaming <laughs> television. Look at Ted. <laughs> Look at what That's he put. Be a no for me, dog. Tim Rodriguez puts, I just don't trust it, Wesley. <laughs> yeah, how do you trust somebody that still watches Leave it to Beaver? That's that's my question. Wow. Or Andy Griffith. <laughs> You're going to make an Andy Griffith reference? I'll be like, wow, bro. <laughs> well, let's get West. Let's go ahead and uh, pitch over here to Chelsea. Chelsea, are you excited about Falcon and the Winter Soldier? I'm more excited about... Um... 
this Justice League Snyder than I am Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Now, okay, but I'm coming from a very different per perspective than you guys are, right? So I saw WandaVision and I thought it was great. The last episode was, I thought could have been better, but I also don't know what was supposed to happen. Like, was there supposed something supposed to happen than what did happen? Was there supposed to be more? What, what were y'all expecting? All I, I can is tell you is her brother yeah. was a really good segue or entryway into introducing mutants into the yeah. Marvel Cinematic Universe. And instead, we get Bonner or Boner, whatever they named him. It was a wasted opportunity. That, there was a lot of wasted opportunities in that but, but we're geeks at heart because we we've read the material and we love it you know we read the comics and that's respectable yeah you know. we care so i totally get that i guess moving into falcon and winter soldier i've you know read up on it i did read though that it's supposed to be like each episode supposed to be longer than yeah. 30 minutes so i'm hoping I did see um that. and i saw the trailer you know stuff for that and it looked good it just didn't look as um it just looked very drama filled, yeah. I guess. And and I like drama. I just prefer to see more like action and blood than I do, I guess, more of a storyline. Uh, maybe that's why I'm so more um, intrigued by the Justice League stuff. So, I mean, I'm going to watch it because I have nothing else to watch right now. But you got the Bachelor. Don't, don't, don't even lie. You know you've been watching the Bachelor. Every week, so. Wait, Chelsea, can you say that again for the Russian judge? So you can put <laughs> I'm going to watch it because there's nothing else to watch right now. She's been watching The Bachelor. Don't let her fool you, man. Oh, I do like The Bachelor. Okay. But this season really sucked balls. So don't don't watch it. Don't That's worry. That's what I've turned. I don't watch it. Yeah, Ugh. I don't watch that. As soon as this my wife has, and yeah. daughter turn it on, I'm out. <laughs> it's like dreadful. It, it was I'd, dreadful. I'd rather watch Leave it to Beaver. Joking. Right. <laughs> that's, that's that's the bar you have to meet to get or, Wesley's attention. Or better yet, <laughs> let's put it like this. Ben, would you rather watch The Bachelor or no. the replay of the Spurs and Heat game six, fourth oh, quarter? Oh. Stay Bachelor. With Ray Stay Allen bachelor. in the corner. Oh, God. No brainer, Bachelor. Me. Yeah. Uh, I'd probably have to watch The Bachelor <laughs> the first time ever. You're goddamn right. You're gonna watch the that, that game still gives me nightmares. <laughs> damn right. We, I, 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 I don't even watch that game. Every time they replay that game, I don't care if I see it on NBA TV or whoever. I don't watch it. I ain't watching that. They're not gonna tear my heart out again. Can't make me. Yeah. Every time Manu and Kawhi go to the free throw line, I just go like, please just go in. Let's just let's just see the replay. Maybe it'll go in this time. No, bro. <laughs> Seconds away from victory. Damn you, Ray Allen. That's all you can say. Uh, Every time I really see him, I want to like throat chop him. Yeah, exactly. That's well, aggressive. I yeah. Like that. So let's go ahead and bring <laughs> the show to an end here because we've already stayed on way too long. But we got to geek out and have our, our discussion here. It's fun. You know, bringing you all a little bit more than just sports talk. We're, we're diving into the world of everything. You know, even, you know, some headline news here, which we just shared the Tiger and the Bobcat story. So some weird stuff like that we're going to share with you guys. It's a good topic of discussion. And I think the, the title of this episode should be Tigers, Bobcats, and Kawhi. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> I'm a poet, Chelsea. <laughs> that was great. He's the Russian judge has vanquished. He's back. Joe is back. <laughs> Joe here, was here. that one out the entire podcast. I did. I was waiting for a setup. Yeah, I was waiting I for know it. you, Joe. You can't fool me. <laughs> so we're going ahead and bring this in, uh, to an end. So we're going to go around the horn real quick. We'll start with you, Wesley. Wesley, where can they follow you on social media, sir? Yeah, check me out, Wesley Perk. Um, talking a lot of uh, college baseball, something Ben that doesn't get talked about a bunch right now, actually. Um, some really good college baseball teams in Texas, and they don't get a lot of run. Um, so uh, definitely a lot of baseball, a lot of uh, Spurs stuff right now, and. Uh, Talking that Dak Prescott contract. Mm -mm -mm. Dak. We're going to the Super Bowl this year. You already know that. No, That's a talk on on, 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 on Twitter right now. They'll be happy. Relax. Just like the Dallas Cowboys do every single year. They wouldn't even make a Madden Super Bowl on easy. There's no way. That's okay. Let the hate <laughs> flow through you. It makes you stronger. <laughs> 
<laughs> baby stranger. Oh, I can't wait for this, the Dallas Cowboys to get back to the Super Bowl one day so the haters can just suck it. You know, uh, it's yes. going to really eat at them. Years. Well, I don't know why Rudy's over there talking because, you know, Matt Ryan, they're never going to get rid of him over there. He's the girlfriend oh. that'll never leave. After you've broken up with her, she still won't leave. You got to get the cops I've to take her out. I've best to, get, to try to get rid of Matt Ryan, but Arthur Blanks doesn't listen to me. So, I mean, you would think they listen to me. I've been telling them Matt Ryan's been garbage for years and they need to get rid of him. But, of course, nobody listens to me Wait, until it's all over. Numbers. He must have no some dirt you, on him or something. I don't know, Chelsea. I don't know. I'm so still ravishing. Trying to ask myself the same thing. <laughs> so ravishing. <It's> ravishing, Rudy. <laughs> didn't, didn't the Falcons have like a 27 point lead in the Super Bowl one time? Oh, don't do that. My. Don't do that. And we don't come do to that. an end of the Two Shots do podcast <laughs> for everybody that's on the damn line now. Welcome. You know, we'll see y'all next week or whatever. Rudy, where can they <laughs> where can they reach you on social media? And also, not only check out Sweep the League. Which is, you know, your your rated R sportscast talk there, but also the show that you have on the weekends at nine thirty a.m. The answer. Yeah, it's the uh, sports dime every Sunday from ten to eleven. Myself and Carolina Teague on nine thirty a.m. The answer. Uh, we talk everything. It's fun. We always have a great time. We're giving away a lot of stuff uh, this week as well. Actually, the whole month of March. Also, sweep the league. We just did our first uh, sports movie draft. Nobody's voted for me. Everybody's voting for Austin which is total shit because I have the best list. I have the greatest list out there. And, you know, before I go, hey, thanks for having me, Joe, as always. Wesley, Ben, Joe, y'all follow me on Twitter. I hope I did a good enough job for Chelsea to follow me back. On oh, Twitter. I don't follow you. I can be, I can be <laughs> cool because Damn, that's hardcore. So hopefully I put I'm in the extra work tonight to, to get a follow. I'll do it right now. So, I'll do it right now. No, hey. That's okay. You don't have to. But yeah. I, you I know would, what I would do just for him calling you out? I would mute his ass. <laughs> What's that? I said, just for calling her out, I said, Chelsea, I would mute his ass. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Hi, Rudy. It was nice knowing you. <laughs> and I'm out. For <laughs> so, no, it's been Find fun, guys. It. I hope to be Where back you? again. Ben, you enjoy March, man. You enjoy the month. Oh, this is just time. This That's, is just time. Is, Gonzaga's is... going to win the title. That's all you need to know. It's Gonzaga. I, it's going to be Gonzaga or Illinois. That's my guess. What about it's Syracuse? Gonzaga. It's chill. It's it's Gonzaga. Don't worry about it. It's Gonzaga. Y'all sleeping on I Syracuse? My daughter's college fun on all that stuff. It's it's Gonzaga. Gonzaga probably listens to you more than the Falcons do. Oh, uh, Lord. I'm sure. I'm sure my trash can listens to me more than anybody else does in my life, man. <laughs> it, it's going to be the Houston Cougars. That's the Dark Horse. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Dark Horse has a two seed. Okay. So, Ben, where can they follow you on social media and check out the content that you're creating for one Project Spurs? Exactly. You can find me on Project Spurs. They are at Project Spurs. I alone, individually, personally, on Twitter, am at the underscore Boomstein. I will have many, many March hot takes for you in the coming weeks with March Madness games happening. Hopefully some 12-5 upsets. Looking at you, Villanova. And Creighton, that's right, called them out. I'm sure they're listening to this. Um, but, yeah, you can follow me on on there, on Twitter. Um, I, I'm writing for Project Spurs. I'm hanging out with Joe on podcasts, so I'm, I'm living a pretty charmed life. And there you go. Make sure you go ahead and follow Ben. And, you know, you want to really follow him this time of the year because he's going to go ahead and start putting out all sorts of goodness when it comes to the March Madness. So. This is Ben's time to shine. So if you want the skinny on what's going on in the tourney, make sure you follow Ben. And Chelsea. Ben, I expect a wreck them every time, dude. They oh, better see a wreck them after every win. I'm just saying. I don't want All you right, crying, Ben's you off. and Clint okay, crying. So I'll be throwing it up one time. Oh, cool. <laughs> the winningest basketball team in this tournament is? Oh, the Texas, the, a team that's actually in the tournament this year? Hey, oh, come on now. What happened, what <laughs> happened last season? They're not season? the tournament this year. My car heels. Yeah. Oh, and not not Geo's Duke. So Rip Duke. Oh, Chelsea, Rip. Chelsea, where can they follow you on social media? Um, Twitter is Chelsea Torres TV. I really, I feel like Twitter. I love getting on there and just talking mainly like fights and random bullshit. So <laughs> you'll see a lot of like fight stuff. Um, 
I mean, I dabble, I, I pay attention a lot to obviously Spurs and football. So you'll see a lot of that um, on there. And then I have Instagram. I'm very active on Twitter and Instagram. So Instagram is, what's Instagram? Oh, that is not a yes, good sign. Yes, I'm Chelsea. Perhaps it is. Yes, I'm Chelsea on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and Rudy, I'm going to follow you back right now. I didn't know, so I just want to apologize. Um, no this me. happens. This happens often. I I realize I go to somebody's profile and I'm like, oh, I'm not even following them, and then I feel like a jerk. So I promise I'm not a jerk. No, but if I, you think that. No, I don't. And you know, honestly, you know. I was just like, you know what? Let me follow her. And I waited and I kept refreshing for the last three <laughs> weeks. And I thought, well, oh maybe I need to get a white check mark. So that's wow. awesome. Let me get my I'm glad I made out. you feel that I'm way. Getting a little white out on my phone here with the check mark on there. So he's legit. Be, you know, I would be able to be cool and stuff too. So <laughs> he's just laying it on thick. Rudy. Yeah, Ravishing Rudy's just laying it on thick right now. <laughs> I know. Wow. No. I know. This is the first time I've actually talked to Chelsea. You know what? I wonder if Chelsea's following <laughs> Ben. Are you following yeah, Ben and, and Wesley? But yeah, work? I've known Ben for a while. I follow Wes after, um, I think, maybe last week. So it's just Rudy. I'm like slacking. So it it's, okay. No, it's okay. I mean, we're we're still trying to see if it, it, it gets, you know, accepted. Somewhere. We're still friends. Okay, okay. Rudy, <laughs> yeah, Rudy. <laughs> I'm give my phone. still I'm waiting. Agree. Rudy's still <laughs> waiting. <laughs> I'm doing this right now. Watch. Ready? Oh, oh, there it is. There, there it is. is. <laughs> now you can end the The deed is done. She's yeah, going to follow you. Have... And as soon as we're done, she's going to unfollow so you. <laughs> <laughs> Just unfollow him right away, Chelsea, as soon as we're done. Out of spite. This, Out of spite. Deuces, deuces. Yeah. <laughs> Notifications not even going to have enough time. To be yeah, for <laughs> real. So you can also follow me at Two Shots Podcast on, you know, social media. I'm on Twitters. I'm on the Twitters. I'm on YouTube, Instagram, and and uh, Facebook. So you can follow me at Two Shots Podcast. It's all spelled out, T-W-O, Two Shots Podcast. So for Wesley Perkins, Benjamin Bornstein, Rudy Campos Jr., Chelsea Torres, thank you guys for listening and watching another episode of Two Shots Podcast. And like we always say, spread the love, stop the hate, be kind. We're out. Peace.